What's going on today, Internet? Selfish here with Retrospect, and today we are going to take a look at the Retroid Pocket 4 Pro. And we're going to take a look at the good, the bad, the ugly, and maybe even the incredible. Let's take a look. My pocket flip is feeling lonely that it didn't have a stand, so uh, kickstand, woo, looks like it's Scorpion. All right, now that we got this out of the package, let's take a good little look at this bad boy, huh? It's looking good. It is a very beautiful device. Oddly enough, these two things are the same color. You can't tell though, isn't that weird? It's just, I guess maybe how the lighting is, yeah, I guess, I suppose if I move this more over here, still doesn't quite get there. But yeah, they're the same color. So we'll start off with the I.O. like we always do. We'll start up here on the top. We do have our shoulder buttons, which are very nice. Very nice shoulder buttons. We have analog triggers on this bad boy. These are the first analog triggers Retroid has put on a device, and we will talk about those here in a little bit. And then we do have our shoulder buttons, which are nice and clicky. We do have our power button. We do have our volume up and down. We have some vent holes, and we do have a HDMI micro out off the top here. That'll do 720. Moving around here to the left side. She's nice and clean, squeaky. Nothing on there. How about on the right? Nothing on the right. Right. How about on the back? Oh, we do have stuff on the back. They did actually a really good job engraving the branding on this one here with Retroid. We do have these nice bumps too. They actually make it pretty ergonomic for how flat of a device it is. It could probably be a little better, but it's it's not the worst one out there. And then obviously some vent holes for our fan, which is literally the world's loudest fan, but we will get into that if we can even hear each other thinking over the top of each other with this fan. Right here we do have our downward firing speakers. We do have a type C hole, which also does support video out. We do have a memory card hole right here underneath its manhole cover. And then we also so right over here do have a 355 hole for all them jamming tunes. All right, now here we got to the front. Right here we do have our D-pad. This is a dome switch D-pad, which is kind of a bummer, but it actually isn't too bad. It's not as bad as you think it would be. Honestly, from Retroid, you probably wouldn't expect it to be too bad anyways. Doesn't feel as nice as the one on the 2S, but it feels pretty good. Then over here we do have our face buttons. They do have a decent amount of travel to them. Not too much. It's about perfect, actually, which is kind of crazy. All right, then we do have our sticks. We do have L3 and R3. They do go do the clicky clicky. And these are Hall Effect sticks. And those sit either side our 4.7 inch screen. We do have home and back over here. And then we have start and select over here. Kind of throws me off. You'd think that start and select would be on opposite sides. Screw this up and hit these buttons. Every time I'm going for select, I'm either going back or home. I will figure it out someday, I promise. And that's all we got for the IO. Before we get too far into the mud here, let's set her down. And we will take a look real quick at these specs for this device as I put them up on the screen here for you. This here is the Retroid Pocket 4 Pro. And it is running a Dimensity 1100 CPU. You can get a Retroid Pocket 4 with a 900 Dimensity CPU. This one here in particular is running the G77 GPU. This is running 8 gigabytes of LDDDR4X RAM. Its storage is 128 gigs on board. You can obviously update that with a memory card and you probably will want to because otherwise you use all your memory. And it is running Android 13 with a 4.7 inch touchscreen, 750 by 1334 at 60 FPS, 500 nits. Does have active cooling, a 5000 milliamp battery, does have analog L2 and R2 trigger buttons and 3D hall sticks. On top of that, we do have Bluetooth 5.2 and Wi-Fi 6. Always nice to see these devices come out with Wi-Fi 6. I don't know why they wouldn't be coming out with Wi-Fi 6 when Wi-Fi 7 is pretty sure it's starting to roll out. Maybe I'm losing my mind. Who knows? Let's move right along. This is a beautiful device. So I've gone ahead and put the Daijiju front end on here already. There's plenty of videos out there, people walking you through how to get onto these devices. So I figured that instead of doing a setup guide here right at the beginning, we would just jump into a couple games, make this a quick video, and then I'll do a more comprehensive video in a few days or maybe a couple weeks after I get a little bit more time with the device and kind of go from there. Obviously, the biggest question everybody wants to know is, can you play PlayStation 2 on here? Before we get into the, the testing on this, I just want to bring one point up. Every device, PS2 seems to be the benchmark right now, which is funny because a couple years ago, PS1 was the benchmark. But when PS1 stopped being the benchmark is also when they stopped making the PS2 emulator. So we're getting more powerful equipment all the time between this, like the Odin. Odin can play pretty much anything on PS2, but as part of that is it's just powering through. It's not necessarily just the software that's doing it. It's literally just doing what it's doing because it has the power to do it. So if you're looking at something in a $200 price range, this will do a lot of PS2, probably most of PS2 actually, and even most of it at an upscale resolution, which is fantastic. But that has to stop being the benchmark because unless we get another PS2 emulator that's at the point that Aether SX2 is at, even today after a year of not being made, then we can start using that as a benchmark again. But anyways, I'm getting off my soapbox because I think that 
that Vita will be the next benchmark because that one's actually in active development and we've seen a lot of revisions on that in the last year. So we'll just start at PSP. We'll just do a couple of games and then we'll talk about this and what I think so far after using it for a day. Should we go high performance on everything? Might as well. You guys might not be able to hear this though because this fan gets super loud. Before we get going, let's take a look at our settings real quick. Okay, right now we are running two times resolution. I bet you we can run higher than that on this. We are running Burnout Paradise. We'll run it at four times at 1080. Looks like we got the Vulcan back end going right now. So we should be solid. Anti-aliasing is off. We'll just see how this goes. Looks pretty sick. Oh, fast forward is the right button. Huh, right triggers, fast forward. Hey, catch up, catch up. Yeah, this looks really good. It's really clean, not having any issues. And like I said, we're at four times native resolution. So that's Burnout on PSP. Let's find something else. So on this one here, you do just hit the back button. I don't think I set that up. I believe it was set up like that for me. I can promise you that it will play God of War. I do not, however, believe that it will play God of War at four times the resolution, but we will find out. I love fast forward. Okay, watch that frame counter. So we are on, on high. The audio is probably the one thing that doesn't seem to be, you know, it's okay. It's not holding great, but it's holding all right. As I'm editing this video, I'm going to cut about 15 minutes worth of commentary and gameplay out of this footage and just chop it up into some little sections so you can kind of see some of the games that we'll play on here. This video is out of control long. Yeah, I said she's holding strong. Get over here so I can whip you with my big glowy stick thing. Well, I'm going to say that that's working just fine. It's a solid 60. I probably should go further into the game, but that's just not going to happen right now. I don't like where the start button is. In a weird spot. It's better than some of the other places that I'm sure they could have put it, but it's awkward. Mostly when you're trying to skip cutscenes. So let's see what our settings are here. So we are in Redream. I didn't change... Whoop. I didn't change anything because I haven't even set up a redream yet. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm going to go 16 by 9. And now I should be set up. Oh, the controls seem to work just fine without setting them up. So this seems to hold pretty well. I've never made it down this hill without crashing into everything. I thought I was going to make it this time. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about this. Sonic Adventure 2. This is what happens when you don't plan ahead. We're back. We're going to try Crazy Taxi 2 here. have to figure out what the go button is. I got no gas pedal. Should have done this before. Okay, let's try that again, huh? That was a my bad situation. Um, I can't remember. Oh, there's my jump one. This is running totally fine. Not having any problem at 60. Here we are playing a little Ocarina of Time. And I believe we're at a higher resolution too, if I remember right. This game plays very well on here. And I believe the original is 30 FPS, so we're right there. We're right on the mark. I always hated how this is inverted. And I know I can go change it, but it just seems like a lot of work. Right? I never really figured out this challenge because I can always get the pig. Getting the pig is easy. I don't know if I can figure out what button it is. Oh, drowned pig. I'm so sorry. Dude, man, I feel you. Right now with the weather, my nose looks just like that. All right, let's move along. What did it do? Did it just update my freaking? It did, didn't it? Uh, it updated my Aether SX2 on its own. I had that thing turned off. Why did it do that? So here we are playing black at two times resolution. He's running real slow all of a sudden. It was running just fine. What happened? By 1.25, just for kicks and giggles. I'll tell you what, I played this way shysterly sh on some other devices, like lots of other devices. This is probably, as far as the games that I play, this is probably one of the harder ones to emulate just because there's just so much going on. Usually I can I, sn I can, uh, blah, 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 blah. usually I can, s like, snipe sneak through this area without getting noticed. I don't know how I just walked into people. I suppose I'm not really paying attention, but like, one of these idiots is going to have a gun for me. That's just going to have to be a thing that happens. Yeah, this game's holding up all right. I could change that. I'm not going to, just because I can play it like this. Doesn't mean you have to. Oh, it is pretty bright right now. There we go. But you can obviously brighten it up a bit. I usually keep my screen about 60% when I play games. The battery on this thing really well, too. It's actually kind of impressive. Some of the devices I've been testing lately, you know, you're getting four hours out of. Now, this is going to depend on what you're playing. Like, if I play black the whole time, I probably only get four hours because I'm playing at high settings. Granted, this fan is, must be on smart still. It's still pretty loud, but it really isn't as loud as when you hit sport. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's obnoxious. I can't hear anything else in the room when this is on sport mode. Even on smart noise that this fan makes, it's still pretty loud. It, it could be much worse. Hopefully they'll come out with some kind of update where we can actually change the fan speeds on this thing because it could really, really use some fan speed changes. So I'm sitting here editing and I just realized I didn't try a couple of things out. For one, I didn't show you guys any Switch games, which I know that that's going to be the first question that's going to be on here. There are a handful of games you can play. Uh, mostly the ones you'd expect, not overly intense games, but like the new Sonic Superstars here. We'll play just fine. Never really been good at these side-scrolling Sonic games, but you know, we'll figure it out. So yes, yeah, so Sonic works. That's the F button. What am I doing there? Selfish. Not selfish. Odd. Now that I turned my screen back on, can't turn back off again. That might be a software issue. Well, it is a software issue, but that might be something they can fix. I mean, this is kind of a cheap monitor I'm using right now, but you can really tell. Like, this is a decent screen on here, just based off of this monitor alone. Obviously not paying much attention. I'm just trying to whip through a couple of these so you guys can see that it works just fine. All right, one more. There are some games I really want to play too. Wow, you get some really cool screen flickering when this is hooked up. 
through the data port. There are some games that really want to play. They just won't. I put a bunch on here just so I could test out and see kind of where the limits were. But like Horizon Chase, it really wants to play the game. It just can't quite get there. So it gets through this and then it gets stuck in this boot up screen. It drives me crazy. It's right there. Okay, well, so that's that's that. So I didn't put Breath of the Wild on here or Tears of the Kingdom because I didn't think that even this game was going to work. But Skyward Sword works on here fantastically. Now it is a Oh, I can't remember if the FPS on this is actually 60 or if it's that weird like 50-55-ish one. I know there's one of them that's kind of goofy and it might be this one. If it is, then it's, it's running fine. If it's not, it kind of sits around 55 FPS for the most part. But when you're walking around, you can't really tell. And the game does just fine after that. Yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, I, I played with it for a little bit. This is obviously the beginning, but it, yeah, it, it, it works fine. But again, there's going to be more games that you can't play than you can. Part of the problem is for this processor, there, there, you can't add like Adreno drivers or anything to it yet. Nobody has made anything that works with this, and Yuzu doesn't actually allow you to at this point in time. At some point, they may open that up, but right now, uh, you are kind of stuck with what you got. But now we know monitor works. This works. I'm not sure why the screen's back on on this, because it was working independently with the screen off here and just using this as a controller. But that's nor here nor there. You guys don't want to watch me keep playing video games. So let's talk about this bad boy, huh? So let's go over a couple of things that I do and don't like about this device. I do really like the size. It fits in your hand pretty well. I don't, however, like where the joysticks are. I think that these need to be swapped. I'll say it a hundred times. It's really stupid if you want a device to be able to play 3D games and not want to have your joystick set up for 3D games. I like a D-pad too, but it's not conducive to a device like this. It really kind of takes away from the overall gameplay and it's really uncomfortable. And when you buy a device like this, it's like anything else. You would like to be able to use it the way that it is and it should be comfortable as, as advertised without buying an extra hand grip and all that other crap that you're going to have to buy in order to make this so you can play long play sessions. I do like that the speakers are kind of facing towards you. I don't like that they're on the bottom because they could have just made the slits up on the top, but you know, I mean, that's better than them facing back towards everybody else in the room. So I guess I'll take that over that. I don't like that these are only 128 gigabytes of memory. So I've only had this for a day. I haven't installed anything really onto it, but if you're not familiar, when you start putting games on like Yuzu or if you use Vita 3K, those games, they install directly onto the internal drive. So I'm already, without even really putting anything on here, because most everything, like the actual files are on my memory card, but I use 65% of storage in a day. All it is outside the emulators and save files is it's just the files for Yuzu and for Vita 3K. And again, so with Yuzu, it just, when you do an update, like a DLC download or uh, an update to the application, you know, those can be anywhere between, you know, 100 megabytes to gigs, multiple gigs. One of the games that I had originally put on here was 10 gigs. So I'm going to have to go and delete that one yet. So that'll free up a little bit of space. But if you want to play those games and have it up to date, you kind of pay for it on the internal storage side, which kind of blows. Another thing I don't like is why can't these manufacturers figure out where to put a charging port? I know this is going to be a really nitpicky thing to complain about. Why can't they center these? So I'll show you why this is an issue. Now it's all kitty wampus, right? So I've got a whole bunch of docks and stuff, but now look at it. It just falls off. And you know why it does that? Because it's not centered. So everything is in. It's all, it, everything fits in. You know, the thing, it kind of flexes and everything else. But as soon as it sits there for a while, the weight will actually knock it off some of these docks. Now, some of them are fine, but it still looks stupid when it's, you know, off to the side. I guess that was a little much, right? Like it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be like that. And how much work would it take really to move that over half an inch? I mean, I see there's a clip there. So I, I get the, some continuity there, but I think that that would be a pretty easy thing to fix. These guys aren't the only ones. It's not a gripe specifically with Retroid. Every manufacturer does this it seems like when it comes to the third-party gaming space except for the higher end companies like absolute puts theirs in the middle logitech puts theirs in the middle ayn puts theirs in the middle so you can actually use docking stations now these they all do sell docking stations for as well so the thought process is there but it would be nice if these guys thought about what are these people going to do with this when they leave because i have a ghillie kit docking station that i've been trying to put this on just to hook it directly up to the data port and then it has access to an external hard drive that has all my switch library on it I mean, it'll sit on there but it just it's stupid Maybe I'll show it on another video. I just didn't want to unhook everything. The other thing is I'm a little nervous about these triggers. It is nice that Retroid came out after they realized that, yes, there is an issue with these, at least on the first batch of devices that was shipped, that they're going to cover them for two years. So that part is great. I just don't know what that process is going to be. And, you know, the one thing I hate replacing on these devices is freaking triggers because they suck to replace. But, you know what? If you have to do it, you have to do it. I know I fixed my Retroid Pocket Flip myself because the little screen thing fell inside of it that was covering up the fan. Not a big deal. It actually 
doesn't even glue in or anything, it's just body fit. So it wasn't a big deal, it just got poked out with a pen in my pocket. It's just something I think is a little concerning because this is the first time they've used these triggers. Not a huge fan of the dome that's on this D-pad, though the D-pad is pretty accurate. I was able to play fighting games with it and it works pretty well actually for a dome switch. It would have been nice if this like, really felt like the uh, Retroid Pocket 2S, but it doesn't and there's nothing we can do about it. In fact, I think it's slightly smaller. I was gonna measure it, I forgot, but it is slightly smaller. It would be nice to see that get a little bit more like that device. And I guess my biggest gripe, though, it's kind of a stupid thing to complain about, but the fan is so loud on this device. So, so loud. And you don't even have to be in high performance. You can just be in standard mode with it on smart fan, and you can hear the fan from across the room. I mean, it's very subtle at that point, but if you're trying to play this next to somebody in bed, it is a pretty loud device when you're trying to play games where you're using high performance on here. There has to be a way to turn that down because there is cooling testing out there, and it's not actually really doing that much. And we saw that with the Retroid Pocket Flip as well. It really did nothing. There was no reason for it to be on. One thing Retroid has done a pretty good job about it is dissipating heat in their devices. It's not as necessary in a device like this unless you're really pushing it on hard game sessions, probably for like six to eight hours. But it would be nice if they either came out with profiles so we can change the fan speeds ourselves, or if they just built in some more profiles in the next software update to kind of tone that baby down a little bit. It, it just, it's unneeded. I know that sounds like a lot of complaints, but this thing is really awesome. It does meet up to its name. It does fit in your pocket really well. Again, I always live in sweatpants, so my Odin fits in my pocket pretty well, but this definitely fits in there. These Hall Effect sticks feel great. I love Halls. I would have switched them out for Hall Effect sticks had they not been in here, so I'm glad they came in the device itself. That makes it pretty awesome for me. And I really just like, it has a premium feel. And I really like that. The device itself has the right amount of weight. It has a good premium feel to it. You don't feel like you're going to break it, even though it's made out of plastic, which I should probably knock on some wood now because I probably just jinxed myself. But it is a premium feeling device. And so for $200, you are getting so much device here. This handheld is actually coming out with more power than its competitor's handheld is. And for nearly the same price, I think that it's kind of a no-brainer. If you want a smaller device, say you're a Steam Deck or Rogue Ally user, and you want something you can put in your pocket and carry around, I would probably look at this, or I would look at the RG35XXH, something like that, if you're looking for a horizontal handheld. I was actually quite surprised. I wasn't expecting it to actually perform as well as it does. Put a points on the board there for, for Retroid. They did a really good job here. I don't know, what do you think about the Retroid Pocket 4 Pro? Or just the Retroid Pocket 4 Pro? Or just the record... <laughs> So the Retroid Pocket 4 with the 900 dimensity chip, this one's got the 1100. I haven't seen anybody testing the 900 chip yet, but I assume it's probably doing pretty well. I would imagine it's not nearly as close to this, especially on the Switch and maybe PS2 games. It probably would struggle with Vita as well, but I would imagine it'd be pretty good with the GameCube. Dreamcast stuff like that. I'm kind of hoping I see a review on it soon. Otherwise, I might have to get a hold of Retroid and order one of those up just so we can do a review on this channel. Anyways, that's all I got for you today. Don't forget to comment, rate, and if you enjoyed this video, subscribe and share this video with your friends because sharing helps grow the channel. And I'm more of a grower than a shower. I can use all the help that I can get. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. I just want to say thank you for sticking around to the end of the video. If you have not yet already, like I just said, if you could subscribe, that would be fantastic. Only about 3% of people that watch my videos are subscribers, so it'd be great to have you be one of those 3 percenters. And I know you're thirsting for some more content, which is great because YouTube chose two more videos for you to watch, and they're right over there on the side. One of those is going to be the last video that I posted, and another one is going to be one that they think that you like, so that'd be kind of neat. Anyways, I'm out.